it's one-to-one -one relationships, people. It's not one to a billion on Instagram. Coming in hot. Welcome back to the Wild Business Growth Podcast presented by Hippo Direct. This is your place to hear from a new entrepreneur or innovator every single Wednesday morning who's unleashing creativity to grow their business. I'm your host, Max Brandstetter, digital marketing due to Hippo Direct, and you can email me at max at hippodirect.com for any help with podcasting or digital marketing. This is episode number 50. Woohoo! And today's guest is the Instagram expert, Sue B. Zimmerman. Sue B. knows Instagram better than the brim of her hat. She's made a career out of helping business owners establish and convert an engaged Instagram following. She's been featured in Forbes, Inc., Entrepreneur, and even on Netflix. And she'll teach you how to fuel your business results through Instagram, and even why you should keep markers or colored pencils around you at all times. Let's do it for the gram. Enjoy the show. Alrighty, we are here with Sue B. Zimmerman, aka the Instagram expert, aka the notorious Sue B. Z. That's a, that's an extra one for you, Sue. <laughs> <laughs> I like it. How are you doing today? I'm great. It's not raining in Boston today, so I'm really good. <laughs> hey, hey oh, that's that's reason to celebrate. <laughs> Uh, but anyway, this, this is really special speaking to you and you know a thing or two about Instagram. So we are definitely going to get into that. But <laughs> to start us off here, Sue B, I would love to know before Instagram was in the picture, mm -hmm. before you had any idea that Instagram would become such a big part of your life and business, how'd you get started? So I have been an entrepreneur my whole life. So I've marketed myself, my businesses, uh, visually with posters. I used to make posters and I used to hang them up and I used to do like old school marketing. And then, you know, we got social media. Thank you, Mark Zuckerberg. And I used to promote all my businesses on Facebook and Twitter and Pinterest and LinkedIn and Foursquare. And I just became really immersed in social media about eight, 10 years ago for all the different businesses that I had. And when Instagram came around, my twin daughters, we were on vacation and I saw they were on their phones, but they weren't like talking on their phones or tapping. They were scrolling. And I was so intrigued with this motion of scrolling. And I was curious what they were doing. And when I asked them, they looked at me like, I was like, what the heck, mom, you're not going to start teaching Instagram now, are you? Because at the time <laughs> I was, I was teaching social media. I was te teaching it locally, mostly to moms um, and small business owners that just didn't understand how to use Facebook and Pinterest and really keep track of their kids is what they wanted to do. Uh, so I immersed myself in Instagram for my retail store that I had at the time on Cape Cod. So I had a seasonal store on Cape Cod in the summer and I had a social media business. I did social media marketing uh, off season. So I really was my own case study in that I used Instagram to get traffic in the door at my store and because it's so visual, as you know, and there's an element to storytelling and you can geotag and hashtag and all these tactics that we can talk about if you want, I was able to bring traffic to me. I was literally able to attract the right customers who walked into my store, who purchased from me and my sales went up so much that I wanted to become an educator teaching other business owners, small business owners, retailers, how to leverage the power of Instagram. And that was over seven years ago. So I've been on the app teaching it for seven years and I've watched a huge transformation go from 140 million monthly active users to over a billion monthly active users now. Yeah. And it's pretty exciting. There's always something for me to teach. There's always a new tactic, a new tip, a new hack, a new strategy, and it keeps me on my toes. And I love, I love the power of Instagram, but I mostly love that when I ask people, why do you like Instagram? It's always because it's fun. And when social media becomes fun and doesn't feel like work, I think people embrace it with a different mindset. Absolutely. And you can tell that you do really love Instagram because I know how many different businesses you've started and been involved mm -hmm. in and, and you've landed on Instagram. And so you, you've had a lot of 
other options and areas you've worked in, but really Instagram is where your, your heart is, uh, at least right now. Well, real quick, let me just tell your listeners. So ironically, maybe 10 years ago, I was on the stage at QVC teaching scrapbookers how to embellish their actual photos that you held in your hand using <laughs> double-sided tape and beads and ribbon and cabochons and embellishments. And it's just so ironic that I'm literally doing that now in a digital way using Instagram. Oh my God. Yeah. Yeah. It was non, uh, non social media app, Instagram. It was the, <laughs> yeah. I mean, I was on stage teaching and showing and, and educating a lot of those, um, skill sets that I had from back in the day are applied today to Instagram, which is cool. Yeah. <laughs> well, that's amazing. Well, there, there's a natural tie there. What yeah. about what about um, some other businesses that you're in? Is there, are there is there any that are there any that are more random or that that most people would be surprised to know about? Yeah, um, most of them. <laughs> so right <laughs> out of college, you know, I have a degree in nutrition. I graduated from Simmons College here in downtown Boston. Well, here in Boston, not downtown, but never did anything with that degree. Um, but I moved out to Virginia because I had a job offer and what I was going to get paid or at least what they told me I was going to get paid and what they were going to pay me when I got there were two different numbers. So I'm like, out of here, not working for you. And I started <laughs> my own passion business, which at the time was hand painting clothing. And that led to hand painting boxer shorts, which led to just doing boxer shorts, silk screening them and having a million dollar business at 22. Oh. So that was pretty cool. It was all kind of happenstance. It wasn't uh, it was me looking, observing, watching a trend that was unfolding before my eyes, which was wearing boxer shorts as outerwear and not underwear. And I, I see opportunities before the rest of the world sees them. It's just one of my superpowers. And I was able to lean, lean into that in a big way. And I landed licenses with Disney, with The Simpsons, and grew a wildly successful business with 50 sales reps and, you know, silk screening boxer shorts, kind of like becoming the hallmark of boxer shorts, creating a reason to purchase every season you can imagine. Wow. So, so you could be the boxer shorts expert as well then. Oh yeah. Back in the day, that was a thing. And so, <laughs> yeah, I mean, I, I'm that entrepreneur that follows the next opportunity that feels right in my business at the stage of my life that I'm in. And I know how to make money. Like I know how to make money doing it. So it always has been fulfilling that passion with purpose and intention and strategy, but making money, which validates all that hard work, right? I mean, that's the, the bar parameter of success is, you know, it, are people buying what you're selling, your products or your services? Mm -hmm. So I've always had pretty, for the most part, all of my 18 businesses were or businesses that led me to the next opportunity. And like I just shared, Instagram just organically became something I wanted to teach because it's the success that I had. And I wanted to impact other people the same way that it impacted my business. Yeah, well, it's a great place to start. And another thing on your background, a lot of the things that you're mentioning involve arts and crafts and being artistic and being creative in that regard. Does that go back to your childhood at all? Like, did you, were you into arts and crafts and coming up with things like that? It's funny you said that. So my dad used to own a automobile part store and I, he brought home the paint, the uh, model, the paint to touch up your cars. And <laughs> right. so he used to paint um, models and I used to be I barely spent time with him because he worked so hard. So any opportunity I had when he was doing his hobby, I kind of jumped in there with him and started hand painting uh, barrettes to, to all the guys on this. They're clips that you wear in your hair. And um, back in the day, it was like the preppy stage of my life, uh, Andover, Massachusetts, very preppy. And I would paint whales and strawberries and rainbows and sell them at recess when I wasn't supposed to. So yes, it started from that. But because I became pretty savvy at business and marketing myself, I, I became a consultant for other companies as well, sharing knowledge with companies like Ked and Crocs and Gibbets. I got involved with trend businesses that needed to know like what to do next. And because I had this sense of knowing, it, I was able to make money with that. <laughs> yeah, and and good thing, but that's incredible that you're. <laughs> it started with paint 
from an auto shop. And yeah, following trends, noticing what everyone is doing and why they're doing it. It's not from a data statistical, you know, pie graph that I'm collecting data. It's from literally observing habits and people and actions. Yeah, and now I'm craving pie. This happens every episode. I start craving different foods, and it can be tied as just a simple mention of a pie graph. So you never know. Thank <laughs> you. <laughs> Let's get to Instagram, a platform that I'm pretty confident you have on your phone. And you know, Instagram hit at the time of this recording. Instagram continues to to grow and grow. And it was funny. Just even earlier today, I was listening to an interview that you did on uh, Michael Stelzer's podcast, social media marketing podcast. Yeah, and that was back. And I know you've done several with with him, but this this one was back in 2013. And at the time, Instagram was much newer. And you were talking about how you had 3,000 followers. Now, now you have a bit more than that. And <laughs> just, it, it's fascinating as, as you spoke to how much Instagram has changed over the past several years. Yeah. How much it's grown. And of course you got the whole Facebook acquisition and the advertising implications of that. But anyway, how did you first get started and really decide to go all in on Instagram? Well, because like I said, at the time I was selling physical products, it was only a natural social platform for me to embrace from my business strategically to show the products that I was selling at my shop on Cape Cod. So that's how I first got into it. And then when I realized a lot of people did not know how to use it, I went to conferences and people were just sharing random things and not strategically from a business standpoint. I knew that there was an opportunity for me to teach. And so I kind of declared, and I can share with your listeners like this YouTube video from way back when, like seven years ago, when I said, I'm going to become the Instagram expert. I'm going to be teaching people all over the world how to use Instagram. Like I manifested <laughs> the life that I'm living because I knew that people didn't quite understand how to use it strategically. And so I've gone all in for the past seven years, like I said, in the app, unlocking these kind of strategic ways to connect. Like I, I believe that, you know, content Content is everything. So what's content? Content can be, you know, visual, it can be video, it can be written, you know, it literally is the thing you're creating that people get value from. And so I realized that visual content, people process visuals like 92% faster than written text. And that's my brain. Much sure. quicker. And so I, I knew that there was an opportunity to share videos, to share uh, photos and make it in a way that was kind of entertaining and exclusive and could potentially grow a community around your product or service. And all of that just made sense to me. It was just natural. It was just rational. And I think it wasn't complicated and it was easy. And it was something that I knew I could teach. And because I taught scrapbooking and I taught art lessons and I taught social media, I knew that I could teach other business owners how to have success. And that's what I've been doing. And I now have a team of nine. I'm traveling all over the world, getting paid to speak, educate. I have online courses. I have classes. I have workshops. I do things in person. You know, I get hired as a consultant. And it's, it's a beautiful thing. I mean, there's all these vertical revenue opportunities that I've been able to create from my passion for teaching and from my passion for helping others understand Instagram. And there's so many people talking about different tactics, but I come at this from a point of authentically attracting those that you're meant to be doing business with and nurturing those relationships over time. So they feel connected to you, to your community, to what you do. And it makes the world a happier place. Like my community is gold. You know, they show up for, for every live broadcast I do. They show up on my YouTube videos. They show up on my posts, in my stories. They follow me around the internet. And that's kind of what you want to have happen. If you're, you know, when you create positive, good energy in the world, people want to be a part of that. And that's what I really pride myself on. Yeah. And you're so true to your word. I mean, you, you started all this by doing it yourself. It's not like you're you know, one of these voices that is saying best practices and stuff, and it's just, you know, trying to be trendy. I mean, you really, right. you've done I've this. Done it. Yeah. You've grown your own businesses. You've grown your clients' businesses this way. Um, so you're so true to your word. Mm -hmm. And that's, as far as 
business growth, would you believe this is a wild business growth podcast? <laughs> as far as business growth goes, that's something that you know any business or any brand and now anybody with their personal brand is interested in. Instagram, what is the number one way people can grow their brand or business through Instagram? Well, there's not just one way. There's so many ways. And of course, uh, I'm, try, I'm trying to narrow it down. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> at, the very, at the very top, when you start, when you say, you know what, I'm going to make, I'm going to go all fucking in on Instagram. I'm going to do it and do it well. I'm not just going to check it off my to-do list and then go off to Facebook and Twitter. When you go all in and you think about your brand, you, you know, the look and feel and aesthetics and energy around your brand and how it's different from everyone that does what you do and you have that point of difference, that's exciting. You know, it's like mm -hmm. those that blend in, blend in. Those that are extreme stand out. So how can you stand out and how can you think of the theme of your look and feel? And I like to say content buckets, the buckets of content that you can share over an Instagram post time and time again that align with your core values, that align with your audience, that align with tips and strategies and in helping other people. It's, it's like people want to look at an Instagram post, either laugh, smile, get educated, informed, or save it as a resource. And if you're not meeting any of those value points, most likely people are just going to scroll and not even stop and not even want to follow you. So if your messaging is not crystal clear from the three to six seconds that you literally get when someone lands on your Instagram account, they're not going to stick around. And if you look at my Instagram account, every single thing from the post to the feed, to the bio, to the avatar, to the descriptions, to the words that I use, the hashtags that I use are aligned with my business. They are strategically placed and done in a way that is consistent. And when you have these consistent nuances and brand elements, you stay top of mind, you become memorable, and other people talk about you. I mean, what did you say in the green room when we were chatting? And I said, how did you find out about me? <laughs> right, it was, it was through Instagram and, and Ann Hanley, a previous guest <laughs> that we had on here. So Yeah, yeah. So when other people talk about you that to me that is success that is you know you're you don't have to market as hard right right well and it, and it speaks to your brand i mean i would imagine more often than not as the instagram expert people do find you on instagram so it's just kind of it's proof of your brand working when that happens <laughs> exactly exactly so if you are new to instagram don't worry i have an amazing youtube channel subizimmerman.com slash youtube it literally has hundreds of five minute and under videos that help you embrace one win at a time because what's happening today online in my opinion is that people are completely overwhelmed with doing everything and doing it all at once and i'm a big firm believer of master this master the bio yep i've got a youtube video all about the bio why you need to set it up how to set it up for success and master that and then move on to another area don't start with your highlights or don't start with an instagram live when you don't even have a feed that represents who you are what you do and why you do it it's just you've got to start from the beginning <laughs> yeah and there's so many different parts of it it can be overwhelming oh sure and, and people a lot of people don't know where to start on that note you know when you think of Instagram stories and the traditional posts in the feed, IGTV, Instagram live. There's more and more that keeps getting added to it. Like it's really, uh, especially compared to back when you did that interview in 2013 and when you started with Instagram, like it has to feel like a totally different app. How do you advise clients on that? How do you go about making sure that people just focus on one area and where do you recommend getting started if you had to start in one place. Yeah. So what I like to say is Instagram is essentially a village now and there's n different neighborhoods in this village, right? There's the <laughs> feed, there's the feed, there's stories, there's IGTV and there's live. And so your feed is what sticks around and stays. That is essentially the proof of concept, like you walking the talk and you having a curated 
presence. It's a portfolio and it's an opportunity, especially now with highlights above your feed, below your bio, where you can save resources that you're sharing in your stories. But your feed is you showing up consistently and giving value each and every post. And value, like I said, and a lot of people are like, that's just thrown around. So like arbitrary, but <laughs> it, it really is. If, if you look at my feed and you look at every single post, I am teaching you something every time I show up. There's no fluff. That's on my business account, the Instagram expert. My goal every day there, five days a week, is to show up, is to teach, educate, inform, so that you feel like I can be a resource and you will want to turn notifications on. You will want to engage in conversation. And for those of you that are just stuck on the posting strategy, let me tell you something. Engaging in conversation threads can be more advantageous 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 yeah then posting because if you know where your community hangs out and you know that there are like-minded business owners or people that you want to bring into your tribe into your community in those conversation threads if you leave thought-provoking comments ones that take up a lot of real estate you're going to get attention Someone's going to say, wow, this person is so nice. They, they don't just comment and dash. They like comment and think and, and really add context to the conversation, to the, to the post. I think the worst comments are when people comment in a way that's so self-centered and has nothing to do with the content that was created. It has everything to do with them trying to get people to go to their account. And there's a right way to comment and there's a sleazy way to comment, right? There's a spammy way to comment. And the right way to com the right way to comment is to be part of the conversation, is to show up consistently and show appreciation when content is shared that you have enjoyed. Did you laugh? If you did, let them know. Did you just learn something? I want to know if you did. Are you new and just started following me? Tell me so I can come over and you know give a little love and give some advice. Like if you're just a lurker and so many people just take and lurk, <laughs> like there's nothing in it for you. You're just lurking. You're not a part of a community or in it for, you know, growing uh, connections, which is essentially what Instagram is all about. It is. You don't want to be a lurker. You don't want to be sleazy or spammy. Not, not, not nice way to be on Instagram. That, that is the worst when you see somebody comment on your posts and it's just uh, total spam back to whatever they're doing, or you can just tell it's, totally automated to the point that they're, they're not even behind or not even aware it's happening. Exactly. So, so that's not fun. I'm fascinated by the way that people engage on Instagram and there's a lot of different strategies uh, about the best way to, to get yourself more noticed or discovered that way. Mm -hmm. What, from, from your perspective, how much time should you spend looking around through different relevant hashtags and the top posts in those uh, versus other methods of, of finding people where your message and your comments could be relevant with them. So let me reverse that and start with what's what I think is better strategy. So I think if you have already figured out the posting strategy, you've got a good bio, absolutely hands down Instagram stories is basically your free TV channel. Your free means to broadcast, amplify, promote, give additional value to the work that you've created in the feed that's more curated. So if you watch my stories, you will see that the content I share in my stories supports the content in my feed, but it's a different point of view and it literally tells you what's in it for you and why. And so if you are using engagement stickers in your story, such as the poll or the countdown sticker or the slider the question sticker and now the donation sticker and people are stopping in their tap of your clip. I call Instagram stories clips and they're stopping and they're engaging. They're literally taking their finger and they're doing the poll or they're answering the quiz or they're taking the slider. When someone does that, you get notified exactly who that person was. Right. So what does that say to a marketer? 
pay attention to those people. Now you can't download a CSV file and like put them in a Google doc, but you certainly can take note of them. And if you start seeing the same people over and over again, that's when you go over to their feed and you start a conversation. And you can even take it one step further when you noticed who has engaged in that engagement sticker, you can send them an Instagram direct message directly from their answer. And this is a little advanced for you guys, but I'm just explaining the <laughs> business side of this. And, you know, it's one-to-one -one relationships, people. It's not one to a billion on Instagram. It's literally showing that you care about the individuals, the people behind the avatar, that, that, that you care about them and that you appreciate them. And you want to respond, especially if they've taken a poll or if they've answered a question, you want them to know that they've been seen, heard, and appreciated. And so many people don't take the time to do that. And that's one of the many reasons I've had such great success growing a business on Instagram is because I really do care and I really do take the time. And it's me engaging. I don't have some <laughs> random person on my team doing this, right? Right. So as much as hashtags matter and I use them in my stories and I use them in my feed, if you want to know the best way to show up in a hashtag hub, I call it, you should be following the hashtags that you think are relevant to your business. And they, those posts that are used with that hashtag will show up in your feed as if you're following an account and you'll be able to see the content. So why is this valuable for you? Well, when you tap in and you see the content, you can see the top nine posts. And I would say, why did they make it to the top? What did they do differently than me? Oh, I see they have a nice layout. I can actually read their description. Um, they have a good call to action. It's a great photo. It's a great video. And it helps you think about creative ways to get better, to up level when you see what's making it to the top. And for those of you that don't know, this is all part of the algorithm. What's making it to the top are posts that have gotten likes, comments, shares, and saves. And you know, all of that is part of how quickly it makes it to the top of a hashtag hub. So I hope that this kind of touched on both of your questions in a strategic way for those listening. Yes, very much so. <laughs> I like your, uh, going back to your analogy of Instagram as a village. I love that. I've never heard that before. And That's it's, because it's called, ha it's hashtag Subies for Neighborhoods. I've kind of coined this methodology. <laughs> there we go. <laughs> yeah, shout out the four neighborhoods. <laughs> but it's like, even within hashtags, there's such a level of that community or whatever you want to call it there because it's now it's not like just there's hashtags it's now there's hashtag stories and you can follow hashtags like there's a there's a whole world you know microcosm in itself there so i, I just got to say i really appreciate you sue oh, for, for staying in the loop and all these things because it is a lot <laughs> it's a lot it's a lot and if you have a hashtag headache believe me i have youtube videos <laughs> that are going to help you feel better and it's really about finding the niche hashtags. So for example, I live in Boston, you live in New York. So one of the hashtags I use strategically every time is hashtag Boston business women. Why? Because people search that and I want to show up and I often get asked to speak at local events because I show up in that hashtag hub. Oh. So whether you create your own hashtag for your community, which I have for my course, Ready, Set, Graham, hashtag RSG community. I have a hashtag for everything. Hashtag Subi live, hashtag Subi stories, hashtag, you know, I Subi IGTV. Like I use it to create, <laughs> to create hubs of content. And if you search the hashtag SBZ YouTube on Instagram, you will get taken to my, all of my YouTube trailers that I share on Instagram. So Hashtag SBZ YouTube are the trailers that lead people to my YouTube videos. And also I have, you know, quotes, hashtag quotes. Those get the most engagement, my branded quotes. But, mm -hmm. you know, there's a reason I do this because, yeah, so quote SBZ takes you to 39 quotes, quote SBZ, and they're, it, they're just mine. So if someone says to me, oh my God, I love your quote, you're 
fucking hysterical. Um, I'm like, oh, there's a lot more. There's, there's a lot more where that came from. Just search the hashtag, quote, SBZ, and you'll see all my other awesome quotes too. So there's a way to isolate your content in a micro way. There's a way for you to build community with a community hashtag. And then there's a way for you to show up in relevant hashtags that would get you more business, more exposure. Showing up in a hashtag, hashtag social media, that is like throw up if you go into that hashtag. <laughs> because every single person is trying to get eyes on that hashtag and it's like random. It's so random. So that's not the right hashtag if you do social media. Social media Boston, maybe, if you're like location-based or, you know, rising tide society or community mm -hmm. over competition, but not social media. <laughs> it's just crazy. People are crash tagging a hashtag. That's what I call it. Oh, my God. You are hashtag Dr. Seuss. So <laughs> <laughs> no, but seriously, like I'm, I just looked at it. There's like a hamburger and there's like a pen. And then there's like, there's just so much, like I wouldn't even want to be curated in this hashtag. So I wouldn't use it because it's just random. It's so random. Yeah. Right. <laughs> it is. And I just have one more Instagram question before we move on. Sure. Of, of, of all these new features and to answer this question, just think of the past year or past year or two from the time of this recording, what thing that Instagram has introduced or, or put more emphasis on are you most excited about? Oh, great question. So it's IGTV video and I was an early adopter the day that they announced it a year over a year ago. I did 24 different IGTVs, but now that it's integrated <laughs> in the in the feed and you yeah. get a minute in the feed to bring people um, to the back end of your video, oh my gosh, my engagement is, you know, I would get maybe 1,400 views, 3,000 views. I'm getting eight, 10,000 views on my IGTV videos and amazing conversation, amazing comments. And it can be up to 10 minutes long and you can use hashtags in it. You can at mention brands, businesses. You can drop a link even if you don't have 10,000 followers. So strategically for those of you that are like struggling with, oh, oh my gosh, I don't even have 10,000 followers. I'm like, you need to be doing IGTV. That's really wow. important. Yeah. Yeah. Did you just learn something good? <laughs> I, I did. I, you read my mind too. Yeah, I I knew. I, I'm somewhat familiar with IGTV, but we haven't really dove. I don't know what the past tense of dove is. <laughs> dove, mm -hmm. Whatever. Uh, I'm gonna make up words too. But <laughs> I'm not very experienced with it. But I had no idea about the link thing because I was always just heard about the 10k limit on stories. So that's oh yeah. And the truth is, most people don't even put a link in their IG description because they don't even know where to put that description or how to do it. So I just yeah. did I just did a new YouTube video that's coming out soon with all the details with all the updates. Awesome. Well we'll yeah. link out to everything and all the amazing things you mentioned in the show notes. So we'll be sure to include that. Hey wild listeners, have you been wanting to start a podcast for yourself or your business but didn't know where to start? Or do you have a podcast of your own but you're struggling with the time commitment? I'd love to help. Shoot me an email at max at hippodirect.com with any podcasting questions you have. I'm also happy to jump on a 30-minute call where we can discuss your idea, planning, production, promotion, and other elements of the podcasting world. Let your podcast run wild. So let's switch gears a little bit. Let's get to a section on inspiration and creativity. Okay. So here, think about things that inspire you, ways you stay creative. So just in general, what do you do to stay creative these days? Oh, I am a creative soul. Like I do a lot of things. I, because I live in Boston, I'm able to easily walk out of my door and go down Newberry street and window shop and shop and go into places like Chanel that just inspires me, um, from a customer journey experience from the second you walk into the second you buy something like what that was like and how I can think of certain things that they did that I can incorporate into my business from a buyer's perspective. So I go and I look and I actually do shop um, in some awesome stores like Anthropology and Allbirds is now on Newberry Street. And there's just all these great energy 
whenever I walk into a place like the dry bar and for the guys on this call, like it's like where you get a blow dry and <laughs> I'm familiar with it. <laughs> yeah. Their Instagram account literally feels like uh, what you feel like when you walk into that store. So that's why oh. I get excited. Like if the experience of what you have online is literally represented in the in-person experience, that's exciting. So I, for creativity, so I do a lot of, I, a lot of shopping, uh, travel. I, I, on the weekends, I'm often painting or coloring rocks, shells. I have a house on Cape Cod, so I go there and uh, just beach comb, and I even color on cups um, and paint. Oh, nice. and, yeah, so I have this artistic, you know, I, I think that you always should have markers or brushes or paint or do something creative with your hands because it just gets your mind in a completely different social space. Mm -hmm. So those are some of the many things that I do. Um, yeah. In addition to even whether it's my workouts, whether I'm rollerblading or working out with a trainer, I'm just noticing patterns or rhythms or things that could be translated into content. So it's just get out of your head with what you do every day and put yourself somewhere new and do new things and challenge yourself. And I love that. So I've always <laughs> been adventurous like that anyway. So those to me are creative. Yeah. I like your idea about always having marker or crayons or anything in your hand uh, mm -hmm. and little story about my childhood, I got in trouble once. I think it was kindergarten or first grade. I had a bunch of friends over and I think my parents had a PTA meeting upstairs. Anyway, all the kids mm -hmm. were in the basement and we colored with crayons all over the basement, meaning the walls, the little basketball hoop, little tykes that was down there. It was everywhere, but got in trouble for that. But I think now it's on the record and I'm going to say Sue B. Zimmerman says it's okay for that. So <laughs> cool. but, yeah so that, that, that was a little extreme but it just the, the nature of always thinking about art and being creative is that really resonates how about so yeah. there's a lot there's a lot of hobbies how about people you know who's been most inspiring to you in your entrepreneurial career I mean I love I watch a lot of online like Seth Godin and um, Michael Port and Marie Forleo Brene Brown Oprah you know, just like, I don't know, people that feel very confident and comfortable stepping into who they truly are. Those are the people that inspire me. Right. Yeah. And do you, are you a big book reader or podcast listener? Like what, what's your... Oh yeah. I'm always listening to different podcasts and I'm usually, sometimes I'm, well, I'm reading a book right now, but I do Audible a lot as well mm -hmm. um, because I just can listen when I'm working out or walking and I do like that. Okay. If you had to pick one, if you, I, I'm sure you have several options, but just shout out one book that you really like and one podcast you really like. Well, Book Yourself Solid from Michael Port. It's an oldie but goodie. And it really gave me the mindset to only work with clients like red velvet. He has this red velvet rope policy methodology, which is when you put your truest gifts out into the world, you attract what you're meant to be serving. And you then have this policy of only working with clients that make you feel good and that you like, and they don't make you feel stressed. And then when you do that, it doesn't really feel like work. It's fun. And I love that. Like that was a huge takeaway for me, um, from Michael Port. And he was my first business coach. So props to him. Cool. Um, and then in terms of books, oh my God, there's so many, I'm looking at my bookshelf right now. Um, I'm reading fascinate right now by Sally Hog, uh, Hogswell. I think that's how you say her last name. I think there's a question mark on her name. <laughs> <laughs> um and i hogshead h-o-g-s-h-e-a-d and it's called fascinate and i love this book because it's literally how do you fascinate other people and mesmerize them to want to follow you engage and you know be connected to you oh the old me would make the terrible joke of that's fascinating but i would never do that let's go to a fan favorite section here called the wild business shadow of the week the wild business shout out of the week. Okay. Wild business shout of the week. This is where we talk about a brand or a recent campaign that caught our attention. And there's a, an, an Instagram account that you mentioned earlier that you want to touch on. You mind diving into that one? Oh, sure. Tatley. So Tatley is a tattoo, <laughs> um, <laughs> temporary tattoo business. And they do a beautiful job on Instagram. And they're so good at really 
embracing campaigns when whatever holiday it is and showing creative ways to do that campaign. So for Mother's Day, for example, they had a tattoo on a mom's pregnant belly. And I just thought that was so smart. Cool. It's like, how can you sell without selling? And how can you highlight without it being so blatantly obvious, like happy Mother's Day? So there's no words happy Mother's Day on this post on Instagram. It's simply a tattoo on a belly. And that says Mother's Day, right? So I love when it's not obvious. I love when it's creative. And Tatley does such a good job at shaking things up and always having creative posts. <laughs> yeah, they do. And Instagram's an incredible place for something so visual like that. So they they definitely hit the nail on the head there. And you have you have some tattoos yourself, yes? <laughs> oh, I just have one of my tap. Yeah, well, they sent me some as an influencer and I did a little giveaway on a live broadcast. And so I put one on my my arm to show people how easy and awesome and real it looks like it, and people think I have a tattoo now with flowers yeah. on my wrist. <laughs> well, I, well, I did. So they're proving your point. <laughs> <laughs> so, so that's amazing. Shout out. So only a little bit of time left here. I want to wrap up with some rapid fire Q and a. Okay. You ready for it? I hope so. All right. All right buckle your seatbelt. This is going to be the scariest question. No, I'm just kidding. Um, <laughs> all right. Let's get wild. If you had to listen to the same song over and over again on repeat for the rest of your life, there'll only be one song, what would it be? Run Around Sue. <laughs> <laughs> there we go. I like it. Okay. If you, same sort of idea, if you could only eat one food for, for the rest of your life for every meal, what would it be? Oh, I like this. Um, gosh, I'm eating so much healthier now than I used to. I mean, I would have said pizza back in the day. <laughs> uh, like a really good pizza, yeah, but I'm, I mean, I'm telling, you know what? Avocado toast has really got my heart these days. Oh Steve, yeah. Avocado toast. Yeah. Did, did you see it on Instagram? I no, it's just it like my daughters are all vegan now. And that's kind of like okay. what I roll with is avocados when I'm with them. <laughs> yeah. It gets, I feel like it's so popular now. It's almost become a, a joke in a sense that people like there's t-shirts that say it and stuff, but it's good. But there's bland avocado toast and then there's avocado toast with radishes and arugula and you know, <laughs> You know, that's what I like. Right. Yeah. What is your biggest pet peeve? Um, when people don't walk the talk, when um, market, marketers market and sell and don't lead with building relationships. I, no one likes to be sold to, period. People mm -hmm. want to be connected to something. And I think there's an art to selling in a way and knowing what and when to do that based on what they need, not on your agenda. So I get really like when people are selling to me, I'm like, like I'm that person in the store that I don't want you following me around and asking me what I want. <laughs> you know, like I want to, yeah. um, I'll tell you when I'm ready. So yeah, I don't like, I don't like being sold to. And I don't think anyone else really likes being sold to. Yeah. Well, sold me on that. What is your favorite social media platform other than Instagram? I really do like Twitter a lot because it's so quick and easy and I can go in and out of my Twitter account twice a day and answer questions and connect quickly. And I think it's really a creative language and a creative way to connect with someone. I enjoy that. I, I like it. Yeah. I've, there's Twitter. Twitter has been one of my favorites for, for a while. It's a, it's, a, it's a lot of fun there. And talk about, you talk about one-to-one -one connection. It's great for that. Last question here. If you had a, 24 hour layover in any destination in the world. Uh, it couldn't be Boston, it couldn't be your home, hometown, but uh, anywhere else in the world, where would you want to go for 24 hours? Oh, I love seeing rainbows, so I'm going to say Hawaii again. <laughs> <laughs> that sounds beautiful. <laughs> I agree. Okay, well, thank you so much, Sue B. Zimmerman. This has been amazing. Really appreciate you You're coming welcome. on the podcast and sharing your story and, and all your real tattoos. <laughs> Can I give a little shout out to your audience? I'd love to give a little challenge call to action. Yes, absolutely. So, you know, I have no idea who's listening and obviously you might be listening a year or two or three years from now. So I want to meet you. I want to connect with you. And the best way to do that and to let me know that you got value from this awesome interview is to come on over to Instagram at the Instagram expert. That's my business or at Subi Zimmerman. That's my personal and tell me your biggest takeaway from this conversation, from this interview, or if you have a pending question that you're dying to get answered, ask it on Instagram because I will get a notification. I will see you. I will respond to you. I promise. 
This is true. Awesome. And so those are two Instagram accounts, the Instagram expert and Sue B. Zimmerman. Any, any other ways that are the best ways to reach you? Yeah. And, and our team account, if you have a team, uh, a team and you want to know how to do Instagram for a mighty team, SBZ team is our team account. And for all of you that want more and that would like a free eight page download, subizimmerman.com slash guide gets you my eight page guide where I talk about each of the neighborhoods in a way that really breaks it down so that you can understand it even more. And there are areas in that download where you can take a pen like we talked about earlier and actually (laughs) write and take notes and really ingrain in your brain what I'm teaching you and understanding. So you have all the tactics and strategies that you need. Wow. That's awesome. Well, Well, thank you for that as well. All right. Stage is yours now. Final thoughts. You can send us off with a quote or anything you want. Sure. My final thought is one of my favorite quotes. I believe the more you shine the light on others, the more the light shines on you. Keep shining, Sue B. Thank you so much for coming on the podcast, Sue B. And thank you, wild listeners, for tuning in to another episode. If you were able to stomach that high note back in the intro, here's what else you can do. Make sure to subscribe to this podcast on your favorite app and leave us a five-star review on Apple Podcasts. You can also check out our marketing and business growth resources at hippodirect.com slash blog and hippodirect.com slash newsletter. That newsletter is the Hippo Digest, and it's your weekly recap of creative marketing from all around the web. And last but certainly not least, make sure to say hey on Instagram and your other favorite social media channels at the handles Hippo Direct and Max Brandstetter. Until next time, let your business run wild. Bring on the bongos! (laughs) 